Good morning, everyone. We are in Paris, and today, what are we gonna do today, Matthew? We are going to the Palace of Versailles to start at 9 a.m., and then we're a little bit over an hour from the center of the city, so stick with us. We're gonna check out the Palace of Versailles and the Paris catacombs later today. And if you didn't check out our first video from our first full day in Paris, we did a, an amazing, incredible food tour uh, from an Airbnb amazing. experience. amazing. She was amazing. What's her name again? Sylvia. So Sylvia. Sylvia we, was amazing. We've got the link for that in the description of that video, but we can't recommend it enough. And then we walked to the Place du Concorde and we ended the day at the Eiffel Tower and we went all the way to the top. Highly recommend it. Uh, it is totally worth it. So if you haven't seen that, check that video out. With that, let's head out and see if we can figure out the train. We'll show you what it's like to take the train from near La Marche in the city, which is pretty centrally located, uh, direct to the station near the Palace of Versailles. Let's take, let's go. Hi guys, we are back and we just got some coffee and quest chocolate croissant, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, in the city center here, uh, right outside the train station, there is a McDonald's and a KFC and Starbucks, all of America's finest. Um, which if you're here this early, it's yeah. usually pretty convenient, but uh, even the McDonald's wasn't open. So we came down to the city center and got this amazing croissant and now we're ready to go to Versailles. Yeah, now we're ready to go with nine. Nine, yeah, nine, it's really quiet. It definitely seems to be worth it to mm -hmm. come early, uh, as early as of a wake up it was, but highly recommend it. So let's get into come it. Come with us and let's check it out. Let's do it. Stay tuned. Inside. In, inside. Yeah. Relatively easy. Just show your pass sanitaire and your uh, ticket, your e-ticket, and came inside. And it's still early, like we said. Can't recommend it enough. The light is perfect, okay. and uh, the palace fit for a queen or two. Yeah, and you, and you have are. this beautiful place. Look yeah. at this. Very few people. Very few people. No, I'm gonna show you guys. Not a lot of people. Look here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's see, we're gonna mm -hmm. go inside right now. Go inside, you know, keep beating the crowds, explore They don't inside, let you... Take certain equipment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to bring a gimbal or any other photography equipment, they might think you're a professional. And, and that, they're gonna charge you for that. Right. Or maybe... Good thing we're not professionals. Exactly. We're gonna do just something for you guys there. I'm gonna show you. Eh? Inside, the hall of mirrors, uh, the chambers of the king and queen, and then we're gonna head out to the gardens. See you soon. Okay, so we're here in the Venus Salon, which if you see there, that is Louis XIV, who is the Sun King, one of the most famous kings in French history, certainly of that era. And this was the entrance to the King's Quarters in Versailles. So functioned as a sort of lobby where they're receiving guests. And then it's really interesting, you can see the type of clothing was very Romanesque. I don't know if Romanesque is the right word, but there's Roman mythology in all of the decoration because he wanted to model himself after the Roman emperors. And so you have a lot of different mythological scenes here. And that's kind of the context of this room. Continuing this, this room, the Mercury Room, is where they had Louis XIV's body on display for eight days. 
after he died in 1715. And this, these pictures were apparently pictures he liked, or pictures, they're not photos. <laughs> the, the portraits and the paintings were on the sides of his bed. And this clock, which took 10 years to build, would ring in conjunction uh, with the sun rising. Because of course, Louis XIV was referred to as the Sun King. So a lot of really cool history in this room. So we're here in the Queen's Chamber, which was apparently used a lot more than that of the King, which was more ceremonial. But two queens uh, both passed away in here. Um, the, the queen, uh, the wives of Louis XIV and the XV. But it was really interesting. Apparently the queens gave birth here so that people could see uh, the offspring and the heirs to the throne. And that little door that you can just make out over there is where Marie Antoinette escaped when the revolutionaries came during the French Revolution and escaped to the king's chamber. So a lot of history. And this wall, I guess, divided to show that the queen's life was separate from the courtiers, courtier, uh, and the rest of the people that were in the palace. So a lot of, a lot of history and very cool. Guys, we are here, it's so amazing, so beautiful, and I can't imagine we are here in the Hall of the Mirrors, right? Yeah, to be in the Hall of Mirrors, knowing the historical it's unbelievable. sense of it, I mean, I knew a lot more in the past than I do now, obviously, <laughs> but you know, you study it in school, but to be here is a totally different thing, you know, where... This was the seven, 17 indoors? Yeah, there's 17, we're learning as we're here, but there's 17 different arched windows, Look and see if you can see these, but essentially it's meant to bring a sense here, of huh? oh, bring yeah. a sense of outside and inside all at once, which originally it was an open kind of terrace, which has now been closed off a long, long time ago. But because you can go and you can come here and just see the gardens, see the gardens. which we'll show afterwards, but it was obviously like many things with royal palaces and chateaux to demonstrate the political might and the social stature of Louis XIV and others. So, and then, you know, what, what we remember most, or at least I remember most from school, is that the Treaty of Versailles was signed here, ending the First World War. So to be in such a cool place, and honestly, not that many people right now. No, I know. I know it's okay. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're gonna... Pretty keep, unbelievable. We're gonna keep doing? Yeah, we're gonna and get out to the gardens. Yeah, we're gonna be back with you guys because it's already is maybe 1 p.m. I think. Or 11. Or see, 11. <laughs> Let me see. Let me check here. Yeah. Okay. So 11. We're still in time. <laughs> so in keeping. Good to come early. But okay. let's do it. Let's go to the gardens. Stay tuned. everyone welcome back after the lunch we are here now in the garden and where I'm at and it's unbelievable how beautiful it is and you guys have to check it out okay man right I mean it's it's definitely a huge undertaking because it's such a so sprawling, big right beautiful uh, series of different gardens and stuff like that but it's it's definitely worth spending the afternoon portion of your visit just going around mm -hmm. and exploring and hey, how big is this this place uh, 77 hectare acres. Ooh. I don't have a sense for how big that is except for the fact that it's extremely <laughs> large and you yeah, can you can come here and spend hours. a whole day here, right? Absolutely. And I mean, the gardens are separate, so I think people come and spend a separate day just going around and exploring the gardens. There's like 55 pools and fountains, and I think I saw people in some kind of boats or kayak, not kayaks, but some kind of like little paddle boats mm -hmm. in like one of the main. Uh, lakes and so there's just a ton that you can do in this particular garden that we're in is the orangey uh, orangey orangery Orange. <laughs> there it is maybe not um, but it's truly beautiful and there's lime trees and orange trees all over the place um, and obviously the backdrop of Versailles
Hello everyone, we are back again now in the middle of this beautiful garden, right man? Yes, absolutely. Pro tip, all of the gardens are beautiful, so do not get hung up on the first one or two areas that you are because as we learned, as we round each bend, there is more beauty to be seen and if you have limited time, you're gonna miss it like we almost did. So there's people out there living their dream on the Grand Canal in boats and just uh, great weather and mm -hmm. amazing stuff to see all around. So make sure that you get around and don't get fixated on just one <laughs> spot. Let's go. Now we're gonna check out some gardens on the way out and then wrap up here before we go to the Paris catacombs later. Stay tuned. Hi guys, we made our final destination and a little bit crazy and I don't know, it's something else, tell us. Uh, we finally got here. Uh, after a long day of walking, we thought, why not another 250 steps? So we are here at the Paris Catacombs. We have just two minutes. We have just two minutes to get in there, but I uh, wanted to show you guys the entrance so you know where it is, right off of Line 4 on the metro. Um, but yes, there are six million, the remains of six million Parisians buried beneath Paris, 20 meters deep. And wow. they're waiting on us, so we won't keep them. How um, many? Six million. Six million, wow. Yes. Okay, so let's go. We'll tell you more about it, but we are excited to see this because it's definitely a must do from what we understand. I've never been there, so here we go. Let's show you guys. You have three of us? I have the three. Okay, everyone, we just are here. What, man? Yes, I That's... would recommend, based on everything, to, to check in, sure. printing your tickets if you can. Yeah. We had to show our tickets like four times. No, no, five times. <laughs> five times in about five feet. But otherwise, it was pretty easy. Yeah, let's check it out. And they have the audio guides and audio guides in a few different languages. Four languages. And, and it's for free already. I think I can't remember if I included it in that ticket. displays was saying that there's 15 almost 1300 years worth of Parisian remains in here so had they not been absolutely like compiled and transferred uh, arbitrarily you would be able to kind of explore the health of the general population over the years except the, that's not exactly how it went the first bit of bones were just dumped in before being you know more routinely transferred but there's just pieces of jaws and arms and things like that so oh you can't really God. tell but they can still see essentially like you're not able to see the preserved reasons behind most people dying at that time was from infectious diseases so kind of a missed opportunity but that wasn't really the point but really interesting nonetheless and then over here we'll show you a map which has the different times that uh, the, the transfers happen. Okay.
everyone, we just are here going under, through, under the city, going under through the, the city. catacombs. It's crazy. What was super interesting is that when they do restoration work, like if some of the walls are going to collapse mm -hmm. because the remains are very sensitive to humidity, um, so to do the restoration work, they have to rearrange bone by bone the femurs alternating between the skulls exactly how they were originally placed to preserve it, mm -hmm. uh, the areas that are preserved. So wow. I wonder whose job that is. Um, whose job is this? Like crazy. Exactly. I'll keep my day job. <laughs> but anyways, let's continue now. Let's continue, guys. Let's keep in under the city with the bone. Wow, guys, was intense. We super recommend you guys stop, make a stop here make a stop on here. your trip. It is a little something, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on the person, but he is somebody who feels energy a lot. So seeing the remains of six million people made him feel some kind of way. I thought it was oh. very cool, and it's a great place to learn a lot of different things about the city's history. So definitely, like you said, recommend it. And um, that's gonna do it for us today. And uh, if you like this video, we would so share. appreciate it if you share it, if you drop us a like. Any drop us, Yeah, drop any questions, drop us a comment. What did we miss in, in the catacombs or at Versailles? Um, we'd love to hear it. And if you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. And we stay tuned for tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a new video coming. We're going to the Louvre and Ooh. we're also going to go to the Champs de Lisée and the Arc de Triomphe and uh, Montmartre and Sacre Coeur. I'm not saying that right. We have a but lot, going a lot on. of things to yeah, do. Yeah. So that'll be our last full day in Paris. So definitely join us on the journey and that's it for tonight. Metro and Renato, subscribe. <laughs>